Yo people, this is One Pan Fat Loss Meals with Joey D and it's sponsored by Squarespace. And when I say fat loss meals, I don't mean it's just a meal that you can eat and all of a sudden you're gonna like get shredded and stuff. What I mean is they are relatively low calorie whilst being satiating, i.e. filling, they fill you up, they're low calorie, therefore they can facilitate your quest for the ever elusive calorie deficit. Let's just do it. It's my new kitchen, yeah! Also, I'm gonna be rolling through stuff pretty quick, but all the ingredients and measurements are in the video description. I personally am making two portions of each, so it's gonna look like, you know, look at it and think, you're not gonna eat all that yourself, are you? But when I'm making meals, I feel like it would be unnecessary and potentially wasteful to only make one portion of each thing. So you can either feed your significant other or feed yourself, like, the next day. Whatever you want to do. All right, we're really doing it. All right, let's do it. You are going to need 5% beef mince, chopped tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes, tomato puree, fresh basil, light mozzarella, white onion, garlic, gnocchi, a few other bits and bobs, and something to fry in. By something to fry in, I mean like oil, not a pan. Although, obviously, you need a pan. This is one pan fat loss meals. You're going to need a pan. Anyway, first up, fry your onions. I didn't turn the camera on to get the entry shot, but I'm sure you know what onions entering a pan looks like, and if not, you will find out shortly. Garlic goes in there too, and once the onions have softened, add the beef. Damn it, that was not smooth. Alright, poke it around a bit until it looks like this ish or just anything remotely similar, and then add a squeeze of tomato puree. Continue with the poking around the pan method and give that another couple of minutes and then add the chopped tomatoes, the sun-dried tomatoes and the fresh basil. Add your oregano or wait there, no, add oregano and a little bit of salt and some chili flakes. Give it a mix around and then magically your gnocchi will appear in the pan. It actually won't, you do have to add it to the pan but again I did not press record so I apologise once more, but anyway, put the gnocchi in and then add enough veg stock to just submerge everything. Let that simmer for about 5 minutes or as long as you want to really, and then tear in some mozzarella. Give it another couple of minutes just so that can melt and then serve that shit. Hopefully the mozzarella provides some nice stringy aesthetics, I don't know what that means. Garnish it with basil leaf or two if you're a peasant who wants to pretend you're a posh fuck for a minute and then I think we'll just do some close ups because this shit is magic. Talk to me about the stringy mozzarella action. Seriously talk to me about it, leave me a comment, say hey Joe I want to talk about that stringy mozzarella ac action. Alright next up you're going to require some risotto rice. Prawns, white wine, parmesan, frozen peas, garlic, onion, oil to fry with, salt and pepper, and some veg stock. I'm using bouillon. Bouillon? Bu bu bouillon? Bouillon? Yeah, I don't know if that's French or... Anyway, first up, put some oil in the pan. You can use some low calorie spray if you want to save more cows, provided you have a good pan. Now, if you were wondering, this is what onions entering a pan looks like and garlic, so give that 5 minutes, utilising the occasional poke around the pan method once more before adding your risotto rice. Give that a stir until it's all coated in oil, and then add a glug of wine, that's the official measurement. Give it a minute or two and then add your veg stock. Let this simmer for about 20 minutes, stirring semi-frequently, whatever that means, and <laughs> these are rough, these are very rough guidelines, and uh, just add enough water to keep the pan Wait there, add enough water to the pan to keep your rice just about covered. Right, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, eat some now and again, and when it's almost soft enough to serve, like when it's almost cooked, I mean, add your frozen peas, maybe a bit more water or stock if you need to, and then your prawns. I bought cooked prawns, but if you bought raw prawns, then obviously give them a bit longer in the pan because you need to cook them because raw prawns equals not ideal. Alright, keep mixing that around and then finally add some of your optional parmesan and mix it for a final time. Get a close up shot but only if you're filming it for YouTube otherwise this step is certainly unnecessary. And then I guess serve it. Black pepper would also not go amiss. Alright, 
All right, we're going like 1950s wartime housewife favorite up in this bitch. I don't know what I'm saying really. Um, it's late. I'm doing a voiceover and it's late. I don't know what that whole sentence meant. You're going to need boneless and skinless chicken thighs, new potatoes, onion, carrot, parsley, chicken stock, flour, bay leaves, and something to fry in. Firstly, add some oil into the pan on a medium high heat and then throw in your chicken thighs. Give them about, I don't know, five minutes, turning occasionally until they start to brown, like so. Remove them from the pan, chuck them onto a plate for now, but keep the oil slash fat and add your carrots and onion into the pan. Give them a few minutes and then throw in the garlic, maybe add a touch of stock just to keep the car just to keep the garlic from burning on the bottom of the pan. Basically, right, if there's one thing you need to learn about cooking, it's don't burn garlic and then everything else you can just wing it, basically. Right, give that five minutes and then add in some chicken stock that you have miraculously already premeditatedly whisked with some flour. Reintroduce the chicken to the party and then add the rest of the stock plus a little bit of water if you need to. Don't worry if it looks like very liquidy. Liquidy is not a word but it's fine. Uh, it'll reduce because this is going to be on the hob for a while. Add a bay leaf and some pepper. Chuck the lid on and let it simmer gently for 10 minutes. Add the spuds after 10 minutes obviously and then continue simmering until just until they're cooked right that'll depend on how big you chop them and you know various factors but uh you can just eat one or poke it with a fork to check if it is cooked and when it is cooked you can add your chopped parsley remove the bay leaf if you happen to come across it but that's not imperative it's pretty hard to eat a bay leaf by accident anyway finally serve a ladle would be the ideal utensil for this task but if you don't have one then some kind of large spoon will do the trick and there we have it some cheap healthy hearty poverty food that tastes great mate that's like wartime ration shit anyway you can't beat it let's do the next one last up you will need some chicken breast couscous squash a squash, some squash, coriander, red onion, chopped tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, harissa paste, cumin and something to fry in. First add the oil to the pan and then the onions, don't know if I'm getting deja vu, I've actually just started every single meal with adding onions into a pan. Anyway, you can pretty much immediately add your harissa paste and cumin and then give that a few minutes to just infuse and shit. That's the technical term, infuse mate. If you're not sure, just say infuse. Add your chicken breast to the pan and uh, poke it around for 10 minutes before adding your squash, poking that around for another like five minutes. Generally, just lots of poking stuff around. Uh, follow that with a tin of chopped tomatoes and enough water to submerge the squash. Cover it, as in put a lid on it and simmer it for like a while. Um, I appreciate this. these are very rough instructions. I'd give it like 30 minutes. Uh, then you can remove the lid before adding your cherry tomatoes and couscous. Don't know why I'm telling you to remove the lid. <laughs> Everyone at home trying to add shit to a pan without removing the lid first. Anyway, the couscous should soak up most of the remaining moisture. So if you were previously shitting yourself about how soupy it looked prior, you should be feeling a little bit better about that now. And yeah, that doesn't really even need to cook. You can just turn the heat off and let it sit for five or ten minutes mix in your coriander before you serve and then serve and i think that's it i think that's it people i think we got uh, four times one pan fat loss meals big smash all right just a word on our sponsor before we go squarespace if you are not aware squarespace is the place to go when you need a website and whether it is anything from a blog to an online store squarespace have got you covered there is a plethora of cool templates you can choose from to get you started each with the functionality to accommodate galleries blogs commerce calendars and any major content type you can think of 
Once you've chosen a template, you can put your own twist on it by tweaking fonts, colors, and page configurations using the style editor tool. So it's not gonna look like any other sites out there, even if they have used the same template. Each of the templates is also responsive, so they automatically reformat to suit the device it's being viewed on best, which ensures that your site looks sick, whether the traffic is coming from a mobile, a tablet, or a PC. So if you need a website or a domain, hit up squarespace.com and start your free trial. And then head over to squarespace.com forward slash Joe Delaney to get 10% off your first purchase when you are ready to roll. All right, thanks for listening, folks. See you soon. Ciao, ciao. Joe Delaney is my hero.